Hey Baltimore, I'm Jocelyn Broadwick, Highland Town's Mistress of Smut and the host and curator of An Evening of Vintage Smut. And you're listening to The Truth in This Art Podcast with Rob Lee. Hey, welcome to The Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. The great Rob Lee. You know, the Rob Lee that you know, the Rob Lee that you love. Today, I have the privilege of being in conversation with a gay comic artist living in Philadelphia. Please welcome Salvatore Moroni. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Rob. It's great to be here. <laughs> it, it's, it's great to have you on. We're, we, we, we're doing it. We're making it happen. Um, <laughs> so thank you for being on the podcast. And um, I like to to open up the, the questions. I'm going to start peppering questions. I'm gonna, you know how you look at like a comedian and, you know, people are throwing tomatoes at them, you know, if they're doing bad. I'm going to start throwing questions in your way after this first one. So I'm going to start off with a very softball sort of question. What is what is the Salvatore story? What is the retro sofa story? Tell me about that. What's the story? Give me the the details that got us to this space right now. Uh, so I guess it goes back uh, to childhood. Um, so I'm the youngest. Um, I have two older sisters. Uh, and in growing up, it was, you know, it was my sisters and I and my parents and it was kind of, it, it was funny. We were modern family before modern family was a thing. Cause like my father was, was an, it was an immigrant from Italy. Um, my mom was this military brat, you know, my sisters and I all had different fathers. My oldest sister, China was black and had spina bifida. Like it like, we were just, it, it was, I don't know. It was, we were like, we could have totally have been a sitcom, like a very PC sitcom for sure, or, or not PC. Um, and my sisters were also a lot older than I was, or, or that I am. So, um, like my oldest sister, China, is like 12 years older than me. My sister, Rose, is about eight or nine years older than me. Um, anyway, so apparently the story goes is that I went up to one of my, fa- I went up to all of my family members. And I asked them to draw me Ariel from The Little Mermaid because I was obsessed with The Little Mermaid. Still kind of (laughs) am. So nobody could draw it, right? Like nobody in my family has any like ounce of talent. So they just like, they couldn't do it. And (laughs) I remember, or, or like apparently the story goes, I got so flustered and so fed up that I was just like, as a kid, like, I'll just do it myself. And that's when I started drawing. And so it's all just like kind of began with like my love of mermaids and I would just always draw mermaids. I was always like the art kid in class. Um, And then the retro sofa thing, like that didn't come until around college because I I went to a really crappy college that I will not, uh, uh, that I will not name. (laughs) But um, around like in our first semester, we were told to like think of our brand. And so I thought of retro sofa because I thought it sounded cool. And I always, like, I like retro things. Like, I like older anime. I like older movies. Uh, and my mom really liked vintage furniture. So, like, we always had, like, 50s furniture, like, old sofas and lampshades and all that. So that's kind of, like, how the retro sofa kind of came to be. So. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you for walking us through it. And uh, I think uh, having those sorts of like, what, what did he say? Uh, the, what are the questions you're trying to ask with your work? You're like, where, where are my damn mermaids? That's my question, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, dead ass. Like, I, <laughs> and I could, I like, cause I don't remember because I was really little. I must have been like two years old. But I'm like, I can totally see myself doing that. Like, because I, I used to call them Fitton because I didn't know how to say mermaid, I guess. But I would go, Fitton, Fitton. I'm like, draw the Fitton. <laughs> and then, like, you know, my sisters would be like, fuck off. Like, you know, and then <laughs> I, be, and I would draw it myself. That's, that's great. I, I remember I got into trouble as a kid. I was a big Ninja Turtles fan, uh, the mm-hmm. original, like, 87 series. And I remember, um, you know, holidays and all this stuff. And my, uh, my late uncle, he uh, got my brother and I, we, we both like, our, we, you have your specific turtle. You have your guy, you know. Mm-hmm. And he got us both, like, these kind of, like, bathroom, like, the toothbrush with the soap and all of that stuff. And I remember saying, I think I was maybe four. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't want this. I, I actually wanted an action figure. I got to so much trouble for that when we want what we want, you know? Oh, yeah. Especially when it comes to, like, our, our young, like, fandom, you know? Mm. So you, you, you're you a comic book artist. You you have a, an anime background as well, which we'll talk about a little bit. Um, 
so I, I want to start off with very kind of like like what would be and I, and I, maybe you touched on it, but what would be a a, a life experience that's shaped your current creative like sensibility, like where you're at now, how you approach your work and how you approach like your, your, your play, if you will. Um, I feel like it was just, well, like I mentioned earlier, I was always the art kid in class. Yeah. So like anytime, like there was something remotely related to art, everyone would just like, look at me. Like the only time that other students liked me was when we were in group projects that involved art of some capacity, you know, because they were like, oh, cool, Salvatore can draw something or, you know, like, or if they if they wanted to be drawn, you know, then all of a sudden they were like my friend. <laughs> um, and early on, I grew up in New Jersey. So for the first half of my childhood, I grew up in Long Branch, New Jersey, Monmouth County, very much by the shore, yeah. kind of near like Asbury Park and Red Bank. And the my teachers back then in Long Branch, were very, very supportive of creative types. And they, they were very support, supportive of me. And it was it was funny because when I was little, because I've always been obsessed with sea life, I wanted to be a marine biologist. Like that was my thing. I wanted to like be a marine biologist, study, you know, uh, sea life, aquatic life. Uh, even though truthfully, if I had gone down uh you know, that line of work, I probably would have been like Eugene Levy's character in Splash and try to hunt for mermaids that don't exist. <laughs> but, but no, it was funny. So I wanted to be a marine biologist. And then my teachers pulled my mom aside during a parent-teacher conference. And they said, no, your son is very artistic. You should push for this. Um, which was cool. But at the same time, I'm like, I hated school because I wanted to focus on art, but it's neither here or there. But, um, but no, but no, they were, so they were super supportive. Um, and I just, I just remember there was always like cool shit they were doing for me. Like there was one time I came into class and they had this giant easel out for me and pens and they said, Salvatore, we just want you to draw whatever you want That's great. for the entire class. Um, and of course I drew Ariel, but like, <laughs> I don't know, like they were, they were super supportive. Um, and then there was like a, sh- a, a shift when I moved, we, we moved from Long Branch to Titton Falls and Titton Falls was like, about like, a half hour away from Long Branch. It was more uh, like upper middle class in a way. And like, they they definitely didn't care about the arts. It was more about like the athletes and the, you know, and the brainiacs. And that was not me. I hated sports. I hate, hated academics. You know, I still don't know how to fucking divide. Like, <laughs> but they, you know, they just didn't care about artists. Yeah. Um. But that that support that I got early on, I don't know, that really kind of like shapes things for me. Yeah. And also just, you know, figuring out different types of like ways that I wanted to do art. Because um, I didn't do comics until probably like middle school, I mm-hmm. guess, or high school, uh, middle school, middle school. Because um, when I was a kid, I didn't read comics. And then I, I, I was a big Sailor Moon fan. And Sailor Moon was the first comic that I really like read actively. I was like, this is really cool. And then at some point, probably when I like read Devil Man, I was like, oh, I really want to make comics. <laughs> and I would just draw my own comics. And they were always bad. Like at first they were always bad because I would do this thing where either I would just rip off ideas of what I saw or I would just start in the middle of a story. So like like if you're familiar with like Dragon Ball Z, for example, mm-hmm. it would be like if Dragon Ball Z started with like, Namek about to explode while Goku was a Super Saiyan fighting Frieza. Uh-huh. And they would expect everyone to just like know what was going on. That's like what I do with my comics. So I would draw these comics and show my friends. And they're like, fuck is going on? Like, who are these people? What are they doing? And I'm like, and then I get so frustrated. I'm like, this is so and so. And obviously he's fighting this person because they're they're after this thing. And if they get that, the world will be destroyed. And everyone will be dis- like it made no sense right and i just like didn't understand that yeah so then i started off small uh i did a comic about my guinea pig okay because i had this guinea pig who i named rando after the yu yu haka show villain for some reason this is great and he um he was always just like really skittish and paranoid Mm -hmm. and we kind of had this inside joke that he always thought that someone was trying to kill him so I made this comic about him and him fearing that people were always going to kill him. And it was just his little adventures. 
but it was funny. It was really stupid, but it was funny. And kids liked it. They're like, oh yeah, this is funny. There's like some social commentary there, I guess. I mean, they didn't say social commentary, but that's definitely, you know, what they meant. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, and then that was that was my first comic. And then from there, I guess I started realizing, okay, I need to establish characters. I need to do storylines. Yeah. Um, so then I did um, I did another comic called Valentine, and it was about a girl that had a crush on a gay boy, and like that that blew up to be like a big thing in school. So I mean, like people who didn't even like me were like, "Yo, where's that comic at that I heard about? <laughs> you like, read my comic." So that like that really like shaped a lot of things about me especially now with like no more mermaids you know like i i think back like if it wasn't for like that valentine comic or like that that rando comic i probably wouldn't have even been at this point with no more mermaids so 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 let's um it was it was a lot there i got so many other questions now based Sorry, on what you were I saying so I, no i i appreciate it i dig <laughs> it so i so these are maybe out of order but it's fine um so let's see let's see so there's a belief right out there that um you know and i'm I'm ripping off austin cleon again but there's a belief out there that artists are tasteful thieves um especially early on it's like oh let me make my own version of what you know an artist that i dig is doing let me make it mine so i'm taking their influences and ultimately adapting their influence into their own style and then building off of that do you have any creative victims like, you know, artists that you're like, I want to, I'm trying to do my version of their style or I'm trying to write or try to like frame a story the way that this artist would do their work. Could you, you know, say a bit about that? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it's no secret. I'm a big fan of old school anime and manga, uh, especially stuff from like the seventies specifically. Um, so like, Going off a few, definitely Gona Guy, the creator of uh, Cutie Honey and Devil Man, uh, Shinji Wada, who did this one of my favorite comics ever, uh, Skeb on Deka, and Yoshihiro Tatsumi, who did like A Bit in the Old in Tokyo, Goodbye. Um, I can't remember the other ones off the top of my head, but he he was a huge influence for me. Like he was probably the biggest influence on like No More Mermaids, especially. I just I loved his storytelling, and he did like really greedy like underground comics. So those are definitely like my creative victims, mm-hmm. uh, and sometimes I don't realize it. Like a friend of mine recently read um, Skip on Decca Shinji Wada's manga. And she said, she goes, I immediately recognized the influences, influences on Salvatore's work. And I was like, yeah, that's so true. I was, and I don't even think about it sometimes, but yeah, th- those, those guys for sure. That's, that's wonderful. And thank you. That, that was <laughs> the exact answer that I was looking for, actually. Because, you know, people will say, oh, I don't know. It's like, no, own that shit. You know, like there are, are people that you you're, you dig and that you have some influence from. And, you know, like even doing something like this where I, I rally for but struggle against this notion of whether this form of uh, creativity, this this podcast is actually art. I'm like, well, I'm influenced by these people and, you know, I approach it like an artist and all of these different things. And I don't shy away from like sharing this. Like I'm Mm -hmm. a, I'm a facilitator. I'm facilitating facilitating people telling their stories and the same way as any um, interviewer or Q and a person would do. Um, And in fact, I steal questions. Uh, (laughs) So you're like an artsy Barbara Walters. Yeah. Yes. If I had hair, it would be be white. It would be great. Um, so, so tell me about the tell me about your autobiographical comic, uh, No More Mermaids, and because uh, I mean we've we've touched on it a little bit. So, so tell me the story of, of, around that, and how's the experience been? Because it's autobiographical, so there's very much you baked into it, and um, and what sorts of like creative license do you take? Because uh, sometimes we have to keep the innocent innocent in storytelling, um, and sometimes we have to like change certain details for uh, maybe comedic effect or storytelling. So, so tell me about that. Yeah, so No More Mermaids originally started in 2017, and I haven't really done a comic since, like, high school. So, like, like throughout my adulthood, I've always wanted to do a comic, and I think I did, like, one random one-off sh- shot comic for, like, a compilation or something, or, or a zine or something. But, like, I never did, like, an ongoing comic. So... I had this idea of doing No More Mermaids because for a while I was like, you know, it'd be kind of like interesting to write about like 
dating experiences, hookups, and then it like it never really happened, right? Yeah. And then just I, I feel like it just happened one day. Like one day I just sat down and I like started writing this comic um about about me going on grinder and like hookups I had and kind of how empty I felt afterwards. And I was very like shy and secretive about it. Like I remember I uploaded it somewhere and I like posted on Facebook. I was like, hey, if anyone's interested in a comic that's very raunchy and adult, like let me know. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's like even like coworkers of mine, like people I like I haven't seen in years. They were like, yeah, yeah, I want to see it. And so I uploaded it. And I thought that people were going to be disgusted. They were going to be like, what the f- is wrong with you? What is this shit? Like, you bastard, you sick fuck. <laughs> but no, and they loved it. And to the point where it was almost disappointing. Because I like, I do like shock value. And like, not, I mean, realistically, nothing really bad happens in No More Mermaids. Like, it's not like it's a John Waters film. Like, no one's going to like eat dog shit or anything or like fucking chicken. I like that Baltimore connection you just made there, by the way. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love, I love John Waters. I'm surprised it, it took so long for him to come up in conversation right now. <laughs> but like, I, I thought that people were going to be appalled. Now, granted, like, none of my family has like seen it. Um, not like I have like a huge family, but like, you know, I tell my sister all the time, you can't read it. And I don't think she would want to. I think she even said, she goes, I'm going to fucking read your comic. But <laughs> thanks, Rod. But, um, it's <laughs> great. Yeah. So it just, it just, it started and it continued. And for me, No More Mermaids is less of a comic and more of a picture diary, I've yeah. always said. Yeah. Um, just because it's just me jotting my feelings down. Um, although it's like I feel like it's evolved more like now it's like it feels less like a diary and more like an actual comic now because I feel like now it has like a storyline and all that shit or whatever but uh, (laughs) now um, but as far as the experience has been um, it's been really good like it it really helps me come out of my shell um, because I'm I'm a pretty shy person I was an extremely shy person when I started this comic I mean like I didn't really like to talk about sex. I didn't even like to talk about being gay. And here I am writing and drawing all these things that have happened to me being gay, having sex, you know. So it helped me get out of my shell. Um, it helped me have like pride in my work. Yeah. Cause like I just wasn't really proud of anything that I've done. And I mean, not like No More Mermaids is gonna win like an Eisner or anything, but like I read it and I'm like, Damn, this is pretty good. I did I did a pretty good job. So I'm I'm like proud of it in many in many aspects. Um, as far as creative license goes, um, so while my comic is autobiographical, thus based on true events, it, it's mostly based on my experience with those events. Yeah. So like how I process these encounters and these memories, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, So, like, while I try to stay as true to the memory as possible, you know, the way that somebody remembers something can become distorted or exaggerated, especially when you relay these stories to others. Um, So, like, for example, there's a chapter where I go on a really bad date with this obnoxious guy who I called Dave. Uh, I made sure not to use anyone's real names in the comic. But he did a lot of weird things on the date and he kind of acted out like an actual cartoon character. (laughs) Like, um, you've seen the Animaniacs, right? Yes. (laughs) Okay, so, like, you remember how, like, the Warner Brothers would just, like, fuck with people? Like, they would just, like, sit there and make faces or, like, (laughs) just, like, do, like, really obnoxious, like, like, walk around crazy for no reason. Like, that's how this guy was. Like, there was that one point where he was walking, he was just kind of, like, bobbing his head and swinging his arms, like, for no reason. And so, to like, as a way to kind of translate that into the comic, there's, like, I would just draw him really exaggerated. Like, there's, like, a one point where he looks like one of those, like, barrel, those, like, monkeys in a barrel. Yeah. Like. Just loopy arms. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I would, like, draw, like, the motion lines so you can kind of, like, visualize, like, him just, like, swinging around. Um, So, like, I always think about that chapter because that's, like, a good... I mean, you know, that chapter was very accurate. Like, people are always, like, did he really act like that? I'm, like, yes! 
<laughs> people are always like blown away. They're like, was he that much of an asshole? I'm like, yes, he was awful. Um, but it also frustrates me because like I tell them, you know, if you're reading that chapter and your takeaway is he's an asshole, it's you're missing the point. You're you should be reading that and thinking, why did you stay for that, you idiot? Like you should have <laughs> left the moment he was acting crazy. And instead you spent an entire day, almost slept the night over at his house, you know. I mean, but I, I guess they wanted to just root for the protagonist. So, <laughs> there. I mean, that, I mean, the way that you're you're describing it, and I, I obviously I've not had a, had a chance to really dive too deep into anything. But uh, mm. I mean, I, I I'm, it's it reads like eh, I feel like this could be adapted. I feel like this could be adapted into something. I mean, it may not be an Eisner or something like that, but you know, unique voices, everybody's voice, and, and there's there's a lane. There is a lane that. I'm I'm actually interested in to be honest with you. <laughs> Cuz the way that you described it, it sounds hilarious. I would love for it to be animated or something. Um I, a friend of mine teased it a while ago. Like he was like, "Oh, he goes, you make comics while I produce things." And I'm like, "Okay, well, what do I have to do?" And he he was like, "Give me a script." So I gave him a script and I never heard back and I'm like, "What's going on, man?" And you know, I'm supposed to see him in a couple of months, so we'll see. Maybe I'll just like grab him by the balls and be like, make this fucking cartoon but <laughs> no more near walls it's like shut up this is mine give it back <laughs> um so i got one more real question before uh we get to these rapid fire questions and i'll be remiss if i didn't mention your, your your background with um you know working on anime releases so you're editing like subtitles right um so yeah so tell me about like ultimately like taking something that obviously you're you is, is a big part of your fandom and making it an additional skill set because i mean when i read that you know your background is you know you're working with you know anime products and uh, um I, I immediately go back to this time when I was in the anime expo trying to find a way to say, hey, do you guys need like a six foot four black guy? Can, can we can we find a way for me just to be myself, but in anime form? So tell me about like like working uh, with animes. That yeah, that was really weird. It's still like surreal to me, even though it's been about 10 years. Um, so I work with Discotech Media. I'm I'm not an employee of them at all. Like I'm not on their payroll or anything. I just like I help out. Um, they they basically have diehard fans working on their stuff. Um, like I know there's like one set guy that they get to work on Loop on the Third um, mm-hmm. releases. Um, so I guess with me, I'm mostly working on Gonna Guy stuff or have worked on Gonna Guy stuff. Um, I became involved with them because they released my favorite show, Cutie Honey, on DVD, and I thought the subtitles were really bad. I mean, the subtitles were really bad, and so I had like a very like it's so cringy to think about but like i just sent them like this really long letter or this email where i was so upset i was like how could you do this but what like like they had murdered my child or something (laughs) um and the owner was really nice um he emailed me back like almost immediately i think it was like within the same day explained what had happened was really nice and then basically said he goes well how about you just like work on our other releases then? Cause at the time they were going to release Mazinger Z and devil man. And I was like, Holy shit. Really? Like, cause you never expect that. Right. Like you're yeah. never like, you know, you're going to like call out somebody and they're going to be like, well, do you want to work on it? Like, <laughs> right. It was, it was crazy, but yeah, no, it was, it was just weird. Cause I remember being like 14, 15 years old, downloading, <laughs> episodes of devil man in italian because you couldn't find the japanese version and now here i was like editing the subtitles for the dvd release and i just did the blu-ray release actually so i like revised the subtitles that i originally worked on um and it's just i don't know it's it's really surreal it's so cool and you know you get to find out insider information i used to find out like about things they were licensing before they came out uh, I'm working on something right now that I can't say because they haven't announced it. Um, yeah. But I'm actually doing sub. I'm actually doing the subtitles from scratch this time, so I'm like actually timing them. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Um, and I, I did that for the Devilman Blu-ray too. There were there were a few extras. I don't know if they're actually going to be on the disc or not because that's always with extras. It's always up in the air. Um, but yeah, there was a couple of extras on the Devilman disc, and I like timed them all from scratch, and that was fucking cool so <laughs> no that's that's really great um this this has been this has been a treat um so with that 
Um, I got some rapid fire questions for you. Um, they're going to get progressively weirder, but some of them take into account things that you've said uh, during this interview. So I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, shooting those your way. So um, if you're ready, we can get into a couple of these rapid fire questions. Okay, shoot. All right. And, and remember, don't overthink them. Don't overthink them. Uh, favorite John Waters movie? Oh, uh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not the title uh, of one. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> uh it's a tie between female trouble and serial mom okay okay i like that you, you hit early on and you hit one of the more later more more recent uh releases what have you i was what 94 i think for serial mom yeah that was the first one i ever saw too i was four years old watching that shit which i should not have been watching but whatever no <laughs> <laughs> uh okay finish the sentence on a friday night i am <sighs> i've been the first thing that came to my mind was very inappropriate. Um, the G-rated version would be spending time with my boyfriend. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. Good on. Health, healthy times. Tell me a song that's on your toxic or ratchet playlist. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm like... <laughs> We all have I, we all have them. <laughs> I know, but I actually have to say it out loud. Um She Don't Love You by Little Kim. Okay. Yeah. I mean, hell, any Little Kim song, but that's the best one. Okay. Um if you could be a marine animal for one day, what animal would it be? <sighs> hmm. I guess a great white shark. And I would totally eat people. One hundred percent. I would attack people. <laughs> oh, you guys are dying. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, absolutely. One hundred percent. So I got two more for you. Um, three. Uh, what are your top three active animes? So animes that are currently like running. Oh shit. Um, th- that's not a good question for me because I I do not watch new anime. Got it. Like I, okay. I think the most recent anime that I watched was. Uh, it, it was probably like, fuck, I don't even know. I guess like the latest loop on the third series, but no, no, I didn't even see that one. I saw the one before that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I let no you worries. down. We can scrap that <laughs> one. Okay, then here, here's the replacement one for it. And one that I kind of promised you early on. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip. Really? Yes. Huh. Okay. Okay. I actually just found out that's my boyfriend's favorite flavor too. I had no idea. I was like, what? I was like, how did we not like discover this about ourselves yet? Simpatico. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so that's it. You got you off the hot seat. Um, so one, I want to thank you for coming on to this podcast. And two, I want to invite and encourage you to tell the fine folks um, anything that you feel we've missed, anything that um, will send them to check out your work. So the floor is yours. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, uh, I'm Salvatore. I'm a comic artist living in Philadelphia. Please check out my comic, No More Mermaids, if you're over the age of 18, that is. You can read it on Tapas. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, on Twitter, I'm just RetroSofa. On Instagram, I'm RetroSofa.inc because some Swedish or Finnish fuck stole <laughs> RetroSofa. So I can't actually be RetroSofa on Instagram. Dude, if you're listening, give me your account. You haven't updated it in like five fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure i come off as very charming in this interview <laughs> no this this is I, i've laughed a lot actually this is this is pure comedy so <laughs> this is great um and uh thank you again for coming on to this podcast i i really appreciate it and appreciate you in indulging uh, this format and and being a part of the series so really thank you thank you so much rob no this has been awesome i really appreciate it what you're doing is amazing thank you i appreciate it um so for salvatore maroney uh i'm rob lee saying that there is art in and around your neck of the woods you just gotta look for it (laughs) 